Yeah, yeah. I don't blame these people at all for wanting to come to America, but by no means. Um, so it's so interesting to say, because obviously my knee jerk is, well, what can America do? Like, what can we do to, to, to help these countries? But are you suggesting there's, there's really like very little that we can do? It has to happen from within. And then I'm hopeless that these countries can be fixed from within. I mean, what, what experience do we have of countries in Latin and South America uh, really improving? Maybe like Peru for a while or what? What do we do? Or Chile, I no, should say Chile. No, I, I, I honestly think that this, this idea that many, many people have that America needs to solve every other country's problems, that, 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 that needs to stop. It's an absolute, it should be an absolute non-starter, one. Two, America's not the only donor at the table here and not the only one involved in humanitarian assistance, right? There's so many other international donors, but the problem is if the system is broken internally, yeah. then whatever assistance that you provide is not going to work. For example, in Honduras, right, just last, just a few weeks ago, the president of Honduras's brother was sentenced to a lifetime sentence in the United States for drug trafficking and for using Honduran state resources for drug trafficking, right? The president of Honduras is considered to be an unindicted co-conspirator in his brother's drug trafficking case. There have been dozens of Honduran, senior Honduran officials who have been one of which, or rather a few of which, have been known, have already been credibly accused of stealing dozens of millions of dollars from the country's, their, their equivalent of what would be like a welfare distribution system. Right. I mean, so the, again, it does not matter how much assistance is given. It doesn't matter how much cooperation there is. If the system is inherently broken at the highest level, that trickles down to the bottom. And that essentially does not inspire hope within people or just kind of provide reassurance within people for individuals to stay. Mm -hmm. Then you compare that to a country like, say, El Salvador, right, where if you look at the actual numbers of individuals who are arriving at the border, there's far less Salvadorans who are arriving at the border. Their security situation has improved within the last year. Their economic situation hasn't improved much. But at least individuals within that country have the idea, well, I have a government in place that's not stealing from me anymore. I have a government that's actually responding to the crime issue. So why am I going to leave? I don't want to leave my country. Hmm. I'm feeling a little hopeless, Anna. Help, help me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't have any hope. Is there an argument to be made that America allowing so many uh, asylum seekers from these countries to come in here is like an, like a uh, like enabling the corrupt governments, or, or is, is that a thing or no? I look, America should not be in the situation right now, not even just enabling the corrupt governments, but America should not be enabling the human smugglers, the human traffickers, because that's exactly what's going on right now. Right. This is an absolute boon to the human to the human trafficking industry. This is we are enabling human misery and we're also destroying the opportunities for these countries to build a better future. Right. So last month. 99,000 single adults were apprehended at the U.S. border, right? These are the same individuals who you are going to want to help reconstruct and make their countries a better place, right? These are the change makers. These are the civil members of civil society. These are, you know, the, 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 the this is like the community. So imagine 99,000 in just a single month. In terms of children, there was a 99% increase. I think it was like 19,000 minors, like un, unaccompanied minors apprehended at the border alone. These are minors who were sent off with smugglers to arrive at the United States. So imagine what potentially could have happened to these children who were just smuggled along with, you know, these random coyotes who the parents probably didn't even know well, but just felt, well, the Biden administration has now made it much easier for me to send my kids off to America. Let me just risk. I mean, we all saw the video from a few weeks ago of those children being dropped off of this massive wall. They fell 14 feet. Imagine if you're you're if you have any loved ones in your life that are three, four years old and they were dropped from a 14 foot wall. Right. These are the kinds of things that are happening to kids on a regular basis because of the changes in U.S. immigration policy. You know, we don't know how many never made the journey or get sec uh, stuck in sex the sex trade on the other side of the border, our side of the border, and never get counted in that 19,000. My last question for Yana is, someone would hear that and say, yeah, the fact that a parent is able is willing to risk their child to take that journey shows how bad the situation is in, in those three countries. And the, the kind thing, the compassionate thing to do is to help these families and help these children live 
uh, a more prosperous and safe life. Uh, and and you're, you're, you and I are heartless for, for even questioning that narrative. What do you say to that? The compassionate thing, my opinion, is for someone to never have to leave their country. Right. It's for someone to actually have a government that serves them, that serves their interests, and also to not have a U.S. administration that politicizes immigration policy just so they don't have to be different than Trump. Right. Because that's what's being put in place right now. It's, it's an absolute rejection of Trump administration policies simply because they don't want to be like the previous administration, even though the previous administration was focused on ensuring that children were not involved in that. We're not we're not getting trafficked by coyotes, ensuring that, you know, how does the U.S. government cut into cartel profits because human trafficking and human smuggling directly enables cartels. And 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 so I'm sorry, but I just I don't see that there there is nothing humanitarian about encouraging child smuggling. There's nothing humanitarian about encouraging the potential exploitation of children about vulnerable women. It absolutely does not exist. Mm. I think that's right. Anna Quintana, senior policy analyst of Latin America, Western Hemisphere from the Great Heritage Foundation. Anna, let's uh, talk again. Really appreciate you. Yeah, definitely. It's Tad soon. Yeah.